everyone, Natalie Willis here from the Baby Sleep Trainer talking about a huge topic today. Can you keep a pacifier and sleep train your baby? Let's categorize, let's split this into two categories. So we've got our first group of babies who are not old enough to grab a pacifier and put it in their mouth on their own. Let's call this babies between the age of four and eight months. Um, younger babies in four months also can't put their passy in, but they're not being sleep trained, so let's not worry about them. Then let's call babies eight months of age and older into toddlerhood, those who maybe perhaps are dexterous enough to find their pacifier and put it back in their mouth. So generally speaking, if you are sleep training your child, which means you are teaching them to be independent sleepers, go down flat on their back in a completely empty crib, wide awake, be able to fall asleep independently from that point for naps and bedtime. That's what I mean by sleep training. If your child is under the age of eight months, then you really don't want to use a pacifier for sleep training as long as, and this actually counts for both age groups, uh, I would say any baby under the age of 12 months, you don't want to stop using a pacifier without express permission from your pediatrician first, okay? So if I'm telling you that you should consider not using it, this is assuming you've discussed it with your pediatrician and they've said, yep, totally okay, totally safe for your baby to sleep without a pacifier. Okay, so let's say that you've gotten that sign off. If you have a younger infant, don't use a pacifier. Don't give them a pacifier or offer them a pacifier within 30 minutes of any nap or bedtime. So just make sure that those, it, they go away, right? And that may panic you and you may be like, oh my gosh, how's my baby gonna sleep without a pacifier? That's what sleep training is. They don't know how to fall asleep without one. But the thing about sleep props, whether it's nursing, rocking, holding, passies, whatever, they're all interchangeable. So it doesn't matter if it's a pacifier or a swaddle or the breast or the bottle that your child is dependent on in order to fall asleep. They're all pretty much exactly the same to the baby. So it shouldn't be any more scary to eliminate a pacifier than it is to eliminate anything else. But let's talk about this category of children who can put their pacifier back in their mouth without help. And you think, oh my gosh, sleep training is already going to be so much drama. Like I really don't want to take away this other thing that my baby really needs in order to go to sleep. Now technically, you can be successful, especially the onset of sleep training with an older infant or toddler who keeps their pacifier, but here is my case for why you should absolutely use this opportunity to eliminate pacifiers completely from your child's, like the child's relationship with sleep should have zero to do with their pacifier. Here's why. Let's say that you teach your baby to be an independent sleeper. They do great for two months from say eight months to 10 months, no problems. 10, 11 months, they start to go through the 10 to 11 month sleep regression, which we will link a uh, blog post about this below if you wanna learn about it. But let's say that they suddenly stop sleeping very well. They're standing up in their crib, tumultuousness in general. Here's what they might do with that pacifier. I know this is the baby. I know that if I throw this pacifier out of my crib, my mom or dad has to come back in and give it to me. And I will tell you that I see this happen all of the time. And it doesn't just happen with 10 and 12 month old babies. It can happen with two year olds or even older children, right? And now guess what? That child, they were never actually sleep trained if they kept a pacifier because now they can't really go to sleep without the passy, which is why you are so panicked and returning it to them. It becomes this feedback loop of them tossing it out, you bringing it to them and them no longer being willing to sleep without it for naps and bedtime, or in the middle of the night, they start to wake up, you have to give it back to them. So they're not really sleep trained, and they have this big problem on your hands where you have to sleep train a much older baby. Or let's say your pediatrician or dentist says, you gotta stop using this passy for X, Y, or Z reasons for an older child, let's say 18 months, right? Or let's say your child is biting the nipple off the pacifier, and it becomes necessary to stop using it because it's a choking hazard. Essentially, any reason that you are given that your child can no longer use this pacifier. If that occurs prior to your child having given up their naps, I have seen, the reason I'm, I'm so adamant about this is because of the thousands and thousands and thousands of families that I've worked with, I have learned that when children keep their pacifier and they lose it for one of these reasons I just stated, where a parent has to be the one to take it away, they often will stop napping. It is like this catastrophic thing that occurs to the child's napping pattern. And that's it, they stop napping prematurely and they often will never go back. So I would say if you're committing to keep the pacifier, or rather if you're keeping the pacifier for training, really what you're committing to is two things. One, not getting rid of it before they're done napping, which could be as late as three or four years old. A lot of parents are like, well, I don't want my kid to keep it until they're three or four, then you should get rid of it now. And you're also committing to a giant gamble because if you try to sleep train a child who is 18 months or two years who's still in a crib, that's a whole different ball game. And in a lot of cases, it's not possible to resolve sleep issues for kids in this age group if they can climb out of their crib. In fact, it's pretty impossible. Um, and they start doing that when you clear pacifier. It's a whole thing. So just 
Talk to your pediatrician, get their okay, and please stop using the pacifier when you teach your child how to be an independent sleeper. Last thing I'll tell you, totally okay to keep the pacifier as long as it's not within 30 minutes of sleep. So if you wanna give it to them in the middle of the day and a car ride, when they're upset, when they're frustrated, on those on the go naps that you have to do on occasion, they can actually have the pacifier then, that's fine. Just make sure that you don't give it to them for sleep. And finally, if you have other caretakers or grandparents, make sure that you are keeping the pacifiers in a place where they are not going to find them and give them to your child because I see that happen all the time as well. Anyways, make sure to like this video, subscribe for more tips in the future, and I'll see you next time.